there are 11 pieces, and each of them can move one, one spot left, one spot right, one spot up, one spot down. 11 times 4 is 44, right? But they're not all legal. It's kind of like a path search, except with a really complicated border. Do you see that? And it's not only really complicated border, you're in multi-dimensional space. So this is actually 22-dimensional space is where this puzzle takes place. This is only two-dimensional space. We like two-dimensional space because our minds are used to it. We walk around in three-dimensional space all day long, and yet we're always stuck on the surface of the Earth, so life is really more two-dimensional than three-dimensional, isn't it? Ish, depending on whether you're concerned about what's right in front of you or just what's globally near you. Um, how do you imagine, how do you think in 44 dimen or 22 dimensional space? Have a computer do it for you. <laughs> you have a computer do it for you. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a good reason I don't start people off on this problem. People get to it and they just say, ack. But if you've already coded up the 2D solution, you'll see that the the 22D solution is really the same darn thing. You can use the same code, and if it works, it works. You don't have to really think in 22-dimensional space. You just have to apply the same code. Wait, um, do you think this is a 22-dimensional space problem? I am. Why? OK. I, I didn't quite catch why you were saying that. OK. There are, in this case, 11 pieces. Uh -huh. You agree? Yeah. Each piece can move left or right. I claim that's only one dimension because moving left is just negative moving right. And each piece can move up or down. And moving up is negative moving down, or vice versa, whichever way you like to think about it. Um, there's a better reason why I know this is a 22-dimensional problem. And that's because the state you will use to represent this involves 22 uh, values, 22 continuous values. So the right way to code this up is to produce a representation of state that's as minimal as possible, and your representation will involve 22 values. That's really what a dimension is. It's something you can change. It's a value. And it will become really clear as we talk about this a little more why it's 22 dimensional. Um, but essentially, what is, what is 22 dimensional space? Can you even, I'll just tell you, you can't wrap your head around that. No human can. The way we imagine 22 dimensional space is we think of three dimensional space, and then we get all wooey, and we pretend we're thinking about 22 dimensional space. <laughs> that's, that's really what you do. So here's 22 dimensional space. It's comprised of a horizontal axis and a vertical axis and a depth axis, and a time axis, and another orthogonal axis, and another orthogonal axis. And there's 22 orthogonal axes. Any point in this high dimensional space represents a puzzle. Think about that for a minute. Can you get your head around that? How is a point a puzzle? Well, suppose you have the Cartesian coordinates here. Go away, Snowflake. Um, if you plot a value in two-dimensional space, well, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, darn it, I don't want to be uniform. Let's go up here. Five, six. This point expresses two numbers, four, comma, six, right? If you're in three-dimensional space, a three-dimensional point expresses three numbers, right? Four comma six comma two, this way. Or, well, maybe 22, however far away from the screen that is. And if you're in four-dimensional space, now we go back to the origin of time, and however far away that is from the origin of time, there's the fourth number. If you're in 22-dimensional space, a single point requires 22 values to fully define the location of that point. Right? So a single point is 22 numbers. Well, if we are looking at this puzzle, how many numbers is it going to take you to tell me where all the pieces are? 22. 
Where'd you get that number from? There's 11 pieces, so we know both that are all two axes. Yeah, this one has to have an x position, and it has to have a y position. There's two. This one has to have an x position and a y position. There's four, so on and so forth, until 11 pieces makes 22 dimensions. Um, now, there's other stuff in this puzzle, too. This one's red, this one's blue, that one's green. This one's a square, this one's a uh, one of those shapes. <laughs> and this one's a one of those shapes. What about those values? What about the numbers necessary to encode all of that? I'm going to claim that those numbers, while they are necessary to visualize the puzzle, they are not necessary to express the state of the puzzle. Can you fathom that for a minute? Here's why. I don't need to know this is red to know. Imagine you're colorblind. <clears throat> you could still do the puzzle, right? The color's not important. So, therefore, whether or not red is expressed or not, you can still express the state of the puzzle. Imagine that, uh, well, suppose while you're playing, does the shape of this piece ever change? No, it doesn't. Because it never changes, no matter where you move the pieces around, its shape is still the same. Therefore, it's not necessary to express that in a representation of state. State is supposed to be only the things that could change. Otherwise, we'd have to encode the price of peanut butter in China. The entire world would be encoded in state if we really want to do that. All we need to solve the puzzle is the state of what changes. So when I say state, what I mean is things that can change. Because the color doesn't change, because the shape doesn't change, because the black pieces don't move, we don't have to encode that in our state. Therefore, it takes only 22 values, and it's a 22 dimension. OK. Um, thinking about high dimensional space makes people's <coughs> brains hurt. Sorry. But that's really an important concept in AI, is realizing that if you can solve this problem, you can solve any problem. That, that, that's a big deal. And not only that, we can solve this problem optimally, so we can solve any problem optimally. And I'm going to say in theory, of course. Um, some conditions apply, void where prohibited, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, because you have uniform cost search, you can solve this. What will end up happening is you'll start in the initial state, and you'll search all the neighboring states. How many neighboring states are there to this one? This is your starting state, by the way. However many combinations of legal moves I can make. Yep, however many legal moves there are. So how are we going to find all the legal moves? Trying to move all the pieces and see if they overlap. Yeah, that's the perfect way. So I'd write a for loop. I'd say for each of my 11 pieces, for each of my four possible directions, so now I've done all 44, try it. And if I can move up, I'll just move it up. And then I'll essentially draw the board. I won't actually draw it on the screen, just in memory somewhere. I'll plot down all the pieces where, they, where, they, where it says to put them. Put this one here, put this one there, put this one there. And if I ever write on the same spot twice, I know I've overlapped, right? So now I can answer the question, is this move legal? Go up, well, just try it, draw the board, didn't work out, no. OK, what about moving left? Draw the board, did work out, yes, legal move. You see now that you can code up, you can write code that will do, iterate through all possible moves and will return true or false as to whether each one is valid. OK, so now if we know all the valid moves, that's the analog of all the valid directions you can step here. Imagine there's a really wonky border that you have to walk within. And you might find a lot of your directions are blocked by the border, but some of them are valid. Um, once you try all your valid moves, your frontier will expand through all the paths of valid moves in 22 dimensional space. We'll eventually find the goal. Once it does, you can backtrack through the, from the goal back to the start, and you have the optimal solution to the puzzle. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, I think this is the top principle of AI that is covered. I think most, most AI classes at some level 
work really hard to get this through your head that searching a path is the same thing as finding a solution to anything. And if you can get that, we can make computers do amazing things. Okay. So if you're coding this up and you want to do a good job, I recommend you have some concept of a set of actions, some concept of an iterator to iterate over those set of actions, um, some concept of what's a valid action versus what's an invalid action. And if your implementation encapsulates all these things, you can pretty much just rip this problem out, plug this problem in, and you've done both assignments. And that would be grand, because now you don't have to do another assignment. Okay. I got a quick question. Yeah. This may be an implementation question, so you make more of it. Oh, that's okay. Keep, on this, how do we keep from just, if you move the orange block left, uh -huh. you could move it back right. You could. And you're in the same spot again. So do you just exactly. save that board state and try to never go back to it? Yep. Essentially, here we check where you've been before, right? Where you've been is a two-dimensional point because you've been in these, this two-dimensional point. But that point is really the same thing as a state. Because there's only two things that vary, your x position and your y position, right? Well, where you've been really is asking the question, which states have I been to? Have I been in this state before? In the puzzle, this is one of the states you've been to because it's the starting state. You haven't been anywhere else yet. So you've got an empty set. Well, as soon as you move this piece to the left, that's another state you've been to. So if you can take this puzzle and encode it in a vector of 22 numbers, that, that vector of 22 numbers is now a state where you've been before. You never want to go to that state again. And so there's another thing you want to do in general, is you want to have the concept of a state be stored generally. A really great way to do this is in a set. If you were trying to implement a where have I been before in this type of a problem, the really easy way is make another image and just drop a pixel down as you visit the image. Or make a 2D array of places and twi 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 twiddle the bits once you've been to those locations, right? But that's not really very general. If, however, you had a set that stores x, y pairs, that doesn't feel like as good of an implementation for this problem, but it's very, very general, because that'll work with any problem in general. Okay. Uh, you mentioned vectors. I don't believe you were taught vectors and paradigms. Ah, that's probably true. Let me talk about what a vector is. OK. What is a vector? A vector is a bunch of numbers. So this is a vector of size 1. This is a vector of size 2. This is a vector of size 3. This is a vector of size 4. That's really all a vector is. Now, there, there is a whole field of linear algebra. And in linear algebra, they study vectors and matrices. And they have all these crazy operations they perform. Vector times a matrix is done this way. And a matrix times a matrix is done that way, and et cetera. However, they're not really telling you that there's a right or a wrong way. They're just telling you that this is something you can do. And th that linear algebra is very useful. It has lots of applications in the real world. But there's not a right way to use a vector. A vector is just a list of numbers. In the case of this problem, you'll use a vector of size 2 to represent your point. A point is a vector of size 2, right? Because it takes two numbers to represent a vector. Um, this problem is a vector of size 22. But a vector is nothing more than a list of values. So in Java, you can code one up with an array list of numbers, or you can do a, well, the right answer is to do this. Do a double plus uh, new double 22. This makes a vector of 22 doubles or ints or whatever is going Okay. I think I'm out of time. Thanks for coming. We'll see you.